Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the trenches. Welcome back. We are here, episode 28, coming at you from the headquarters in Braintree, Massachusetts. Uh, as always, Jay Fine, Don Gordon, coming at you with Moe from New York. Uh, we're missing our guy, SK, today. He's got a commitment, but that's what our guy does. He keeps his commitments, and uh, he does what he has to do. And Well, uh, we're missing, but we'll have him back for the next episode, hopefully. Um, hey, that's what we're about, man. We're big integrity guys. Hey, we're, say, we're those people that say we're going to do it, and we get it done. That's that's what happens in the trenches. We say, we say we're going to put a guy down, we put him down. That's what we do, baby. <laughs> 100%. And speaking of putting people down, uh, the Boston Celtics came Ooh. into the NBA playoffs Red hot. A lot of people weren't sure what to expect out of them. And here we are four games later, and they swept the Nets in dominant fashion. Dominant fashion. Justin, Justin, you got to implement a sweeping sound. Just put a sweep sound in there. Just just for all the Nets fans that are in there from living in New York, just sweep, 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 sweep. Got them. You know what? All right, here's... Let, let's start here, right? To start the season, I know everyone's probably seen this stat. The Brooklyn Nets came in at the odds-on betting favorite to win the NBA title. I believe they were plus 250. I I could be wrong. Maybe it was, it was I think give, you were right. give or take. I think you're right. Give or take, you know, 20, 30 points. It was, it was, they were like plus 250. Um, clear favorites. And they get swept by the Boston Celtics. And... You know what? It's just so funny because, like, you know this as, like, an athlete and, like, you know, people who play sports. And even if you just, like, work in, like, a group environment, you know this. It's, like, some people are, like, conducive to team success and some people, they just – they don't contribute to a team. They really don't. You know what I mean? Like, we were just talking about, like, you know, contributing to to teams and, you know, the workplace and whatnot. Um but you look at the talent that's on the Brooklyn Nets. You got Kevin Durant. You got Kyrie Irving. You got some good young players. Uh, they just they looked awful. They looked awful. And I don't know. Are the Celtics that good? Are we for real? So like, I I think before I like I get into that a little bit, I just want to like just think about it. I mean, the Celtics. We've been on a run. You know, you think about the season in college basketball, college football. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and and teams and how they end up being successful, whether it be in March or whether it be at the end of the season. Right. And it's all about a game of runs, right? Who's making a run? Sure. And literally, the Celtics have had the biggest run of the season. What it was, 21 games in the last 26 or 27, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So we're clearly hot right now. And then we go to a team where we're, we're number we're number two. Think about it. Number two in the East standings versus a number seven. And when was the last time have you heard in any kind of in an NBA playoffs in anything where the underdog wasn't the underdog? You know what I'm saying? Like the number seven Nets was expected to beat the number two. When's the last time something like that has happened? Right. No, crazy. It, crazy. It sounds crazy to me. But then you think about it, and I'm like, okay, you look at their assets and who can play and who's here, right? KD, Kyrie, you know what I'm saying? Everyone, for some reason, in the back of my, in, in everyone's head, yeah, this dude named Ben Simmons has been planning to play since the beginning of the season. Oh, my God. And they believed that he was going to plan to play in the playoffs. First off, this team has not really played a full season together. They played half a season. If you look at Kyrie's stats versus playing versus not playing, he's not played more games than he's played in the last several years because he doesn't feel like showing up to work. But that's besides the point. But either way, I get it. We've, we, we've gone, we're going against a good team, and we are who we are at the end of the day. But you want to talk about hot teams versus teams that look better or who are projected to be better? There was no way the Celtics weren't going to win this series. Defensively, we'd known to be those guys, right? But I don't know. You give me, give me your thoughts because it's just, it seems like honestly, I, I, I'm some Jordan meme standpoint. I took this shit personally. People were over here like the the Nets are gonna smack the Celtics. I'm like, are you kidding me? Whatever. Uh, man. Let me. So, I will say, 
as hot as the Celtics were, right, I was a skeptic. And here's why. We've seen this Celtics team with this same core group of players consistently underperform like year after year, right? Even like, you know, they, they at a certain point they were on that incline. They had Brad, you know, Brad Stevens first showed up. He took them to the playoffs the first year when they were expected to be awful. And then like for like three, four years, they got better every year. We added pieces. Um, and then the pendulum kind of swung back the other way. And we saw like, you know, a couple of years of just absolute mediocrity, uh, failures, you know, just not, not, you know, we lost in the playoffs a couple of times to just in situations that were just really kind of inexcusable. Um, so heading into this season, I, the, the Celtics obviously picked up where we thought they left off and that was not in a great place. Um, and then all of a sudden now they're, you know, the hottest team in basketball, arguably the hottest team in basketball. And you have to just wonder, okay, like if this team comes out in a series and loses the first game or even goes down like two, one, two, nothing. Like, are they, is this a team that fights back? Like, is this a team that like gets punched in the mouth and, and takes it? Cause I'll, I'll tell you, like, look, they, they looked really resilient against Brooklyn, right? Like, like Brooklyn gave them a, you know, a good effort in some of the, the the final minutes of those games and like they those were games that the Celtics would have blown in years past right and they held off especially game four Jason Tatum goes out so I don't know like I, it feels like a new Celtics team but I have to see it you know what I mean I gotta see it they gotta win no like I'm with you man I, I'm really with you because you think about how the Celtics have played right and I think about bubble Celtics, right? Because that's when they went on that streak. The Celtics played like a team, right? It wasn't anybody's show. If someone went off, someone went off. But the entire time, we're trying to implement everybody within the system. And then something happened in the end of that when we were playing Miami. Jason Tatum just wanted to continue to take the shots. He wanted to be number eight Kobe, even though he wasn't. RIP, uh, number eight, number two, four. But... What happens over this? I don't know if you've looked at it, but they could be playing better team ball. And honestly, this is why I like Udoka as our coach. Because he literally took, think about the San Antonio Spurs, of Tim Duncan, uh, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, all those boys playing together. It really looked like that championship team right there where they were playing completely. The passing game was on par. Everyone that needed to be open was open, and they were able to spread the board, spread the force so well. Yeah, no. I, I, sorry. Yeah, no, no, go no, 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 go for it, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. No, I was just saying it's just like, because you look at some of the biggest teams, right, yeah. and whether it's the Bucks, and, I mean, I know the Lakers didn't make the playoffs and everything, but you've seen the, the Lakers play at their best at a certain extent at, at one point in time, and it's their best players that were able to stand up and show out. But the thing is, it's not even about standing up and showing out. It's about making the game look easy, right? When Giannis can walk up the court, will he give a guy a little push and lay it in as if it was nothing? That's easy. You watch LeBron do things like that, make it look easy, right? Jason Tatum, over the last couple of games, has made basketball look easy. And because of that and how we're able to do on the defensive standpoint and with the defense and offensive play that Udoka has put on for this team, I couldn't be more excited for this for this program right now. I couldn't be more excited for playoff Celtics at this point. No, I I, I agree one hundred percent. But the the only thing I'll say is that the Milwaukee Bucks are not the Brooklyn Nets, right? And the Celtics kind of got screwed in the sense that like they earned themselves the number two seed. And that number two seed gets you a path to the Eastern Conference Finals through Brooklyn Nets and then the Milwaukee Bucks and then whoever would be waiting for them after that. But that that's a really tough bid having to go against those those two teams right out the gate. Look, the Brooklyn Nets are a mentally weak team. You know that. We know that. Everybody else knows that. They got some divas. Um, they're top heavy. They don't have a deep bench. Like they don't have true leadership. Like, that is not a resilient, mentally tough team, okay? The Bucks are a resilient, mentally tough team. This is a team that has won a championship. They have battled back from down in series. They keep getting better, you know, every year. They reached their goal last year. Like, Giannis is uh, – I give Jason Tatum all the respect in the world. I love Jason Tatum. He's probably my favorite player in the NBA. But, like, 
Giannis is that dude right now. Like, if there's a dude who, like, you know, is the definition of mental toughness, that's that's Giannis. Like, the, the Bucks are not to be played with. So I, you know, I'm not saying that the Celtics aren't going to beat the Bucks. I'm just saying it's going to be very interesting to see how they handle going up against a team like Milwaukee because, you know, I, I, they couldn't be, more, you know, farther from the Brooklyn Nets. They're deep. They're strong. They've won. You know, they're, they're a good team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know who I think you, – you, can, you, can you guess? I want you to guess. Okay. Who do you think I believe will be able to D up and body – Giannis, obviously not saying he's not going to throw up 25 points, but he's going to deem up enough to disrupt their offense. Who, who do you think I'm thinking about? All right. I'm thinking of, I think it'd be the one or two guys. I think you're either thinking of, uh, uh, what's his name? Robert Williams. Is it Robert Williams? Who's the, who's the other person? The other person is Grant Williams. There it is. Those are the two guys. Honestly, like Grant Williams, I think he's going to be able to do it. Robert Williams still coming back from being the injury, so he's not going to be able to play to do the full playing time or whatever. But literally, those are the two guys who are the – because obviously, Marcus Smart is the heart and everything. Right. But those guys are so strong and so focused on their defensive play. Granted, they can score offensively, but they know their main job is defense. And I don't know – so. A lot of people have been given a lot of credit, Jason Tatum playing defense on KD, but people weren't giving Grant Williams his respect. He disrupted KD's. Granted, KD scored like 18 points in the first half, but the thing is that wasn't when Grant Williams was on them. When Grant Williams was on them the entire time, KD was off balance the entire time because Grant Williams is that, that dude. He's just that big. Robert Williams came in, put up some space, but at the end of the day, I think we have the size – Height wise and the mass to be able to put up with these guys. Middleton, he has, he's hurt knee, right? I have no idea when he's coming back. But even with that, like whether you have a hurt knee or not and come back earlier, your knee is your knee, right? It's not a rolled angle. You can just tie it up. Your knee is still going to be able to be off balance. So yeah. with our defensiveness and toughness, I think we have enough guys and health to be able to survive against the Bucks. That is my thought. Obviously, ball players are still going to play. And even with us playing a not together Nets, because you know that, I mean, whether you're there or not and you play half the games, you know how it happens, right? It takes you a little bit to be able to get together and actually play together as a team. And they're still waiting on Ben Simmons, cause even though Ben Simmons is soft. But at the end of the day, it's like they weren't like the best Nets team. But with the Bucks playing there, I think we have a shot. I think we have to work a lot harder. Which makes me worried about if we win and make it to the East Coast Finals because they just had to work their ass off for the Nets. They're gonna have to work even harder for the Bucks, and so it's like, who are we gonna play in the Eastern Conference Finals? We get there, probably Miami, probably Miami, and Miami that's the because one, that's the, the number one seed in the East. Exactly, and the 76ers could pooch it right now. They're probably they all might pooch it to the Raptors because and they're 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 a mess, and and Bede has one good thumb. And James Harden soft as let shit. Me, let me, let so. me tell you something. If for some reason we were able to play the 76ers in the Eastern Conference Finals, that would Easy. be that would be a gift from God. That would be a gift from God. I would be so confident in that matchup. I do, however, I I agree with you that I think the Bucks are a very legitimate test. I think there's definitely a chance the Bucks beat us. I think we will get past the Bucks. I do. In my heart of hearts, I think the Bucks might we I you know, I think we'll get past the Bucks in maybe like six games. Um Miami is Miami is where I'm like, okay, now it's just gauntlet after gauntlet after gauntlet. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh if we can take it, you know, that's that's really, really where I'm gonna tune in and be like, okay, like let's go. Like, let's go. For for Miami, I'm just kind of hoping that Jimmy Butler just tries to fight the head coach again, and they just go crazy. You Wait, know, he I'm just waiting. To fight yeah, did, did you not remember what happened before? No, it happened like weeks ago. No, like, I well, didn't. Jimmy Butler and Spolter like going after each other in the middle of the game. It was crazy. Like physically, and then Udonis Haslam is trying to split them, split them up, and everything. It was crazy. 
He didn't see that? It was all over Sports Center. And then Spolstra was just like, oh, yeah, Jimmy's just a fiery guy. He's a leader on the team. But it's just like, yeah, you say that, but we literally just saw you guys going after it on the court. Like, it was crazy. Like, they had to get split up in the middle of the game. I mean, yo, I kind of – I kind of respect it because, like, I feel like too many of these head coaches, like, let players, like, kind of fucking, you know. Say and do. Yeah, say and do. it. Like, you know, there, there used to be a time where, like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, co- like, the the role of coaches has definitely changed, right? Like, I feel like coaches, there used to be a time where, like, yo, you didn't even, like, try to negotiate your contract and let, or they'd, like, trade you. You know what I mean? Let alone, yeah. like, talk back to them on the – on the bench. So yeah, no, it's, 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 it's crazy, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, that stuff happens. We saw Brady do it with, uh, what was his name? Um, Tom, Tom O'Brien or sorry, Bill O'Brien, Bill O'Brien, Bill O'Brien, Bill yeah, O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, O'Brien um, ball, yeah. With Bill O'Brien. So yeah, I mean, and if you've seen him do it with McDaniels, uh, you know, we've, we've seen that. Uh, I, I actually, yeah. I, I, I kind of like Spolstra. I used to really hate him, but now what I see, I don't mind him. Now I don't mind him because I, I used to think he was just a product of LeBron, and then I saw what he did after LeBron left with those Miami teams, and I, I, I found respect for him. I really did. No, I, I get you, and honestly, I think what Spolstra has been doing there is pretty good. Um, I mean, think about it, right? They have like kind of a, I want to say a makeshift team, but like. Yeah, Kyle Lowry, who's good, but I call him a flop because he's like the king of flops. Bam Adebayo, who is a great defensive player, defensive big man, while also being a skinny guy. Jimmy Baller balls out regardless. And then you got Tyler Hero, who is 20. Who, doesn't he average 20 points coming off the bench? I think he's one of the best six men in the league right now. Something crazy, yeah. Something crazy. So it's just like, obviously, from a team standpoint, to be, uh, be consistently a, a leader – on the east, he, he's doing something right, you know. But I'm, but I'm, I'm you know, for our sake as Celtics, kind of hoping that Jimmy Butler pulls some like Timberwolves shit, like comes out, he's messing with Tyler Hero's baby mama, and then messing with Bam Odebio's mother, and it's just like, oh, it blows up. Andrew Wiggins comes out of nowhere talking that smack. <laughs> Cat's like, I told you so. I told you he's messing with my girl. Now he's messing with everyone else's girl. I watch it. Watch wait, 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 hold on. So is 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 that a backstory? Jimmy Butler was messing with Andrew Wiggins' girl. Did you not hear that? No. Did you not hear that either? I did. This not, was like a no. couple years ago. No. This is why he fell. Everything fell through on the Timberwolves. No, bro, right? What happened? Basically, they were having that internal. So this is a few years ago when Jimmy Butler, in the middle of the season, was just like, "We're trading you. We're like, you're 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 gone." Basically. Um, I, f- I forget whether he was injured or something happened and Cat was away. Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah. Jimmy Butler went in, did a little session on Cat's girlfriend. Do a little, give him, give him the Carl one Anthony two. Towns' girlfriend? Yes, on his oh. girlfriend. I think it was Jordan. I forget what was her name. But was giving, was giving her the one, two. And then he found out later on and Andrew Wiggins was like coming to his defense. This is when Andrew Wiggins was on the Timberwolves. So it was Andrew Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns kind of coming against Jimmy Butler. And then Jimmy Butler's like, dude, what do you want from me? It's not my fault she was like about it. Like, you know, it's like, you, you're going to come fight me? And like, obviously, Cat, who's a, you know, one of their big guys, but like, he's a big guy with a soft voice, if that makes any sense. And Carl Anthony Towns, he's like, he's a big dude who can ball out, right. but he shies away from those big moments. So, Jimmy Butler, who was definitely a bigger, louder dude than him, not physically, but mentally and confidently, was just like, hey, man, like, I don't want you want me to do. And so that created an internal tussle, created that internal problem where it's just like, yeah, we can't do this. Cat's our guy. Jimmy, like, you're good. But, like, Cat's like our face at this point. So, I mean... Yo, you know what's, no, you know what's crazy now? Because you was you were saying like bigger, like you you know Jimmy Buckets is a big dude, right? You know, huh? I, I, you know, I was surprised to find out how big Jimmy Buckets is. How how big is he? You know, he's six eight. No freaking way, dude. Jimmy Butler's yeah, look at that. No way, he's got to be like six four. He looks so short for a big guy. I mean, like he's obviously tall. No, nah, bro, like, it's because for it, a tall guy, he looks short. It's because he plays like a guard. 
so like he like he he looks small but like he's like yeah he's like six seven six eight i'm telling you no way yeah. so i gotta look up the jimmy butler oh, oh shit I'm, i gotta i gotta look this up now yo we, are, we gotta peep this because jimmy butler i mean like he's a guard he's doing his thing six, six, uh six seven but i've seen him listed at six eight before <laughs> that's dude. a tall ass dude bro that's a tall ass dude but I mean, like you talking about girlfriends of people in the league. Did I? Did you see? Did you watch the video I sent you earlier? Which the guy one? was talking about this, this girl was on here. She's like, they were like, what is the uh, greatest thing? Uh, what is the most uh, the sneakiest thing you've ever done? Is it? Like, oh, I cheated on my boyfriend, and I got away with it. And she was like, wow, you, you know this is on live TV, right? She's like, yeah, yeah. It's like he's not my boyfriend anymore. She's like, sorry, Ben. He's like, why'd you cheat on him? Oh, it was another professional athlete, and he wanted a job. I'm just like. Classic, yeah. classic professional athlete excuse, hanging out, doing their thing, but wow, it's, can't stick, can't do it. No. Whose fault is it? Is it Jimmy's fault or is the girl's fault for letting it happen? Well, can I? Here's here's the thing that I've always wanted to know: what happens in these situations? And look, I am not a professional athlete. I am not like somebody like that would ever find themselves in this situation. So I generally find myself curious how this works. Like, if you are someone like that who was just in a position where like you are like the cream of the crop, like in every which way in like people are like girls are just throwing themselves at you. Like, are you just going around with the confidence that every chick you see that you're attracted to, like married with a boyfriend engaged, whatever you're just like, you what are you just sliding the DMS? Like you pull them aside, like and ask for that number. Like how, do, like how does that, or, or are these girls like throwing themselves at him? Like, I, like, I don't get that. Like what is he just going Justin. around? Like, you know? Yeah, yeah, Justin, I'm not a professional athlete in any way and I have like an all right job, not making crazy money. But I walk around thinking that I can pull any girl, no, but- anybody's <laughs> wife, anybody's girlfriend at any point in time. It's just confidence. But imagine being Jimmy Butler. He doesn't even think about that. He knows he could do it if he wanted to, but then he decides whether or not he wants to. But that so that but that's what I'm saying. So like you hear about all right, let me all right. You hear about these situations happening all the time, right? Where these dudes are like, you know, like banging someone else's girl or like, like you know, vice versa. Like some chick is banging someone else's dude, like, or whatever. What what I don't understand is like all this shit that like happens. Like, are, are that many people just down with it? That like when all these dudes are shooting their shot that nobody else, nobody's like, hey, honey, did you hear what Jimmy Butler just said to me? Like Jimmy Butler just fucking tried to hit on me. Blah, blah, blah. Like they they just all go with it. And and every now and then one person like when's the last like one person over the the years, however many years it's been, came forward and was like, hey, like Jimmy Butler tried to or Jimmy Butler tried to hit on me. And as you know, and, and according to you, she did it anyway. So she did it anyway. And Carly Downs just found out about it. So like, at what rate are these dudes just like hitting on married chicks and chicks with girlfriends like? And it, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's just crazy to think about. But see, that just throws me down another like path that we don't have to go down tonight. It's like everyone's trying to get married, things like that. Yeah. But you know, one day that one athlete comes down and finds you attractive. It's like, yo, know, Gordon, not rich, rich athlete. Who's going to win? He might be less, not as good looking as me, but at the end of the day, his bag is like 20 times more. So. Hey man, at the end, hey, you know what? You played a good game and you won, bud. It is it is what it is at this point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean that shit. Yeah, that shit is crazy. Absolutely so crazy. dark, so dark. Yeah, legitimately. <laughs> uh speaking of uh, speaking of crazy, so the West is crazy right now. We were just talking about the Celtics a little bit. Uh, Western Conference crazy. Um, Golden State obviously looking like a powerhouse. They're looking like a well, well-oiled machine right now. They're still even waiting for Steph Curry to come back full time into their starting lineup. Um, John Morant did his thing last night, like another monstrous dunk, buzzer oh beating God. shot to uh, to you know to win the game, pull them past the Timberwolves, who we were just talking about. Uh, interesting, man. You know what? I really, I really love what's going on in the NBA this year. I really do because. Coming into the NBA, there were only two quote unquote super teams, and one of them didn't make the playoffs. The Lakers, the other got swept. Just wild to me with with their assets. It was so wild to me. Absolutely wild. And then the other one, the Brooklyn Nets, got swept in the first round. So to me, 
that's justice. You look around the league, you see the the two powerhouses just absolutely have embarrassing seasons fall flat, and then you see uh, all the other like just really good teams that are grinding it out there. All these young players making names for themselves, just battling, having good playoff series. Um, and I can honestly say we're in a position where we genuinely don't know who's going to win the East, who's going to win the West, who's going to win the title. It's you know, there's I don't think there's any single team that's leaps and bounds above above anybody else. You know, no, I'm with you. And honestly, the Lakers was one of the scariest teams you could see in the league with Westbrook, Melo, all those really out, oh, really good guys coming in with, working with LeBron. But clearly, they couldn't figure it out. And honestly, I think it's officially the end of the saga of super teams. You know what I'm saying? We thought it was the end before, and everyone's like, "Oh, the big three's back," or the you know, everyone's kind of doing the two O's. But you know, they try it again with the super team, and clearly, people aren't connecting in the way they used to. So, I I like how the Lakers lost. Yeah, for the West in general. It's, it's it's actually super competitive, but honestly, there's only one team I see coming out of this at this point. The oh. freaking Golden State yeah. Warriors. Literally the only team I can see coming through this at the end of the day. Because, I mean, look at it. The Suns are getting their brains picked out by the Pelicans. When when The, the Suns, they literally broke their season uh, high for wins is getting poked at by the number eight Pelicans because those guys have more heart than them and Devin Booker's injured. You're watching Memphis and Minnesota going at it. Honestly, not a bad series, you know, because you see Minnesota, Anthony Edwards, Cat, and D'Angelo Russell doing their thing. Yeah, versus, I like those guys. I, I do too, but I don't know if you watched that last series with uh, – was when the Minnesota had the ball and D'Angelo Russell had it. The fact that Cat and Anthony Edwards were really looking, I don't know if you looked at them, they were looking down at the ground away from the ball with like 20 seconds left in the game. And I'm like, why aren't you guys trying to take the ball? Which brings me back to Cat being like, oh, big man, but can't handle the big moments type of that. That's why he hit in the corner. And then Anthony Edwards is there. Obviously, Anthony Edwards ended up hitting that one big three. But they hit it because he set himself up. It wasn't like he was going for the ball and did it. You know what I'm saying? Right, it just right, happened right. that he was open in the corner and he took that shot. It wasn't like, yo, give me the ball. I'm going to do this because this is my team. Right. You know? Yeah. Which really throws me for a loop. But then, you know, you got places like Memphis who are, you know, John Moran who's completely dominant, who ended up that freaking last. It was Jordan-esque, honestly. First off, we got the dunk from almost at the free throw line at uh, was it the end of the second or end of the third, mm-hmm. and then you got that one layup up under for two at the end. I'm just like, at that point, it was just like, well, there's one anymore or not. Memphis definitely looked better, mm-hmm. and I don't know. The, these teams are all over the place at this point of the West, but there's really only one team that really comes out and sticks out for being victorious in the West. Yeah. Um- I can't disagree. I gotta say, I got. I'd put Golden State is my favorite to come out of the West. But look, I really like what I see in Dallas. I really like what I see in Memphis. Like, if Devin Booker comes back healthy in Phoenix, like you can't count them out. Like, and I, you know what? That's what I love. That's what I love. Is we can't count anybody out right now. Like, it's all good quality teams in the playoffs. Like, even like the teams that like were like, yo, like. The Timberwolves, like you know, they they got some good young players. They're competing, like uh, you know, it's 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 fun to see. And I think I think the NBA really needed this. I think the NBA needed like this kind of balancing of powers. You know what I mean? Where you had like the LeBron every year. It was all right. Who's LeBron's super team? Plug them into the finals against you know whoever else formed a super team. Uh, you know that, that that's how it was for the longest time. It was all every year we went through a period of it just being LeBron in Cleveland or LeBron in Miami, and then it was either uh, you know the 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 end of the, the Kobe era Lakers or the Golden State Warriors or the San Antonio Spurs. You know what I mean? Like it was just it was it's just how it was. So yeah, I don't know. It's nice to see a little little like you know variety and a little mystery in the NBA nowadays. And these young players are good. They're good. 
they are it, it is it's great and uh you're, we're, we're seeing some good playoff basketball which is what you kind of want at the end of the day i mean everyone kind of gives it no one wants to play defense during the season when you come in the playoffs but everyone's playing some solid defense i mean you know you got people like the pelicans again like what's his name uh who's who's that one player that's been picking off freaking cp cp3 left and right he's been in his head and mccullough no uh, no it no, I'm calling the other guy with the long hair. I forget his last name. Alvaredo? Alvarez? Oh, Amarado. It's like Amarado. Amarado, yeah, yeah. Alvarado. That guy has been going crazy on CP3, and he's losing his mind. Absolute mental image at this point. It's crazy. So, Well, yo, CP3 is what? He's, I, I heard he's, what, 37 years old, I think? He is ancient. He's basically tails all his time at this point. I, so I'm pretty sure he's, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like 37 years old, uh, either 36 or 37 right now. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have a ring. Last year was his best shot ever to get a ring, and his team kind of collapsed and blew it, right? I believe they blew a 2 nothing lead against the Bucs yeah. um, in, in, in the NBA Finals. Um, this year, you know, the West is significantly more competitive. Uh, they're not at their best form. Devin Book is injured. And he's another year older, and he's busting his ass. He's he's probably like, damn, man, come on. Like, I, he's, he's probably just at his wit's end, to, to be honest. If I was Chris Paul, I'd be at my wit's end. He's also like, you know, he's, he's, he's what, the, the, the head of the, the players' union too? Like, he does, you know, he, he does so much for the league. He's, you know, such a competitor. He's 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 such a good player, and he's never had that trophy. And I think he might be coming to terms with the fact that this might not be the year either. And they might never get that trophy. You don't know. So Yeah, you, know, you would you would think your best season, right? Oh, well, there was a stat, right? Yeah. On the last four teams Chris Paul's been on, he and that team have been able to break break their single season record for all four teams. Houston. Uh, well, the the the, the, uh, the team that he's on now. What, what was the other team that he was on? He was on. So Chris Paul was the Clippers. He was the Suns. He yeah. was the Rockets, and he was also. Uh, what am I? Who am I forgetting? Chris Paul. Chris Paul. Chris Paul. I mean, his early days. He was the was. Was he Hornets his early days? Was he Hornets? I think he might be on Hornets. Hold on. I'm pulling this up right now. We got, we have to look this up. Because it seems – because that was a stat. The last four teams is that he's he, been able to – He played in the – Yep. Yeah, Hornets. No. Suns. Thun, Suns. Thunder. Uh, Rockets. Yeah, Clippers. Yeah. Where he's able to break – he broke the team. But they, he, he never played in the Hornets? Or did he get drafted by the Hornets? He did. He was on the Hornets from 2005 to 2011. But they didn't say the last five teams. The last right, four. Okay. So. Okay. The New Orleans Hornets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They drafted so, him, I think. Yeah, in uh, 2005. Yeah, all right. Uh, first round, fourth overall pick. Yep. Out of Wake Forest, I think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I get it. And, uh, you know, you always worry about people in the playoffs because it's like Devin Booker coming in. So, when I, when I look at the Suns and who they are, I think of, you know, there's a guy that's able to score throughout the game, right? And then there's closers. Devin Booker is that guy that drops between 25 to 35 points a game. Just automatic. Just scores that. And then Chris Paul is the guy that comes in and closes the game. Closes the game. You ex- if you expect Chris Paul to be able to, at his age, to be able to drop those points and close the game at the end of the day, you're out of your damn mind. He, he, he's not going to be able to give you that consistency throughout the series at his age. So... Either the other guys on the team pick up it from where Devin Booker left off, or they don't. Or they have no chance at this point. You Who, know what I'm saying? Who's the ba- Who's his backup right now? Who's the backup point guard in Phoenix? I don't even know. Hold on, let me look at the starting five. Because yo, if you shame on the Suns for not having like a good, competent backup that can take serious minutes off of Chris Paul's workload, you know what I mean? Like you should. And maybe they do. Maybe I'm just mistaking. I mean, they had some good guys, right? They have Cameron Payne on there, who is good. He's good, but he's, he, not, he's not a point guard. Yeah, but they have this dude Landry Shamit. I don't even know who that is. Landry Shamit. Yeah, he's their backup point guard, right? 
He's a lot of backup shooting guard. Cam Payne is a backup point guard. Oh, Cam so Johnson do. is the good is backup for the you know for Mikhail Bridges. But interesting. Either okay. way, they don't have a ton of depth, believe it or not, which is actually surprising. They have some depth because I think Cam Johnson's good. I think Cam Payne good, and I think Javale McGee. So you got you know you got three guys coming off the bench that are going to be solid. No, but they, to- they they need like you know how like like you know. Tony Parker had Patty Mills, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like some like that type of situation. Like where you have like a, a a stud point guard and as he ages into his, you know, later years of his career, you kind of find that like really good rising young gun to take significant minutes, you know, off his workload so that he's not in a situation where he has to do that every night. No. You know? Not uh honestly. Uh, it, it's just a real shame, you know. I mean, if, for anybody else that was out there from a big man standpoint, they would be set. But Devin Booker being out hurts them immensely. But it's especially because it's his hamstring, right? You've hurt your hamstring before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when it comes to basketball, being up running on those courts and the freaking shock going through your hamstring, trying to run up and down the court or change direction. It's like none other. When I played football and I hurt my hamstring. You know, you can kind of put something on it or wrap it up and play on it a little bit. But in basketball, if your hamstrings hurt, you're going to be feeling that the entire time. So it's like even if Devin Booker comes back into the next series, if they make it to the next series, he's going to be feeling that. You know, he's not going to be 100 percent. Well, I mean, granted, you know, depending on his shooting capabilities at that point, it might be a little different. But I don't know, man. It's it's interesting. Yeah. No, it's it, it's very interesting. And even. With Devin Booker, who knows? Um, are they even still the favorites? Or, or I, I would say probably not. Golden State's probably the favorites, but like you know, so yeah, I it, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I'd lo- I'm very curious to see how everything shakes up. Uh, Celtics got a little bit of rest, which is nice, right? Um, I believe they're going to have a few days off before that next series, just due to the nature of the sweep. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, Real quick though, we got a we got a few football things. I know it's basketball mode right now. You know, we got the NBA finals going on, mm-hmm. the NBA playoffs mm-hmm. going on. But look, it's uh here in the trenches, it's Wednesday. Uh tomorrow on Thursday, the twenty twenty two NFL draft will be kicking off. Um Oh, it's tomorrow? It's oh, tomorrow. I completely forgot. Yeah. Oh shit, it was next week. No, it's tomorrow. Wow. So we got the draft tomorrow. Um, you know, we're not going to do this long, in-depth draft analysis. Um, which I guess some general takeaways from what I've heard, uh, you know, is that there's it's not a great quarterback draft class. There's no like dominant like you know um, next golden boy that like you know uh, people have been highly touting. Uh, there's a couple of guys who show promise. I know like Malik Willis. I, I believe. Uh, is you know is is probably expected to be the first quarterback off the board. Um, I'm hearing it's a good draft for defensive backs. It's got some really good receivers, um, and uh, it's some D linemen as well. This is pretty much a uh, a defense and uh, wide receivers draft. No no running backs really popping off the page. No quarterbacks popping off the page. Um, so not a little, a little less flashy. Um, what some would maybe even say a down year, depending on you know what, what you're looking for. Um, but there is rumors that the number one pick is potentially changing. For the longest time, uh, we all thought it was going to be, or not we. I shouldn't say we. I had no clue. Um, people are saying it was going to be Aiden Hutchinson, the defensive end out of Michigan. Shout out Steve, go Big Blue. Um, but. Now people are talking about uh, Kayvon Thibodeau from, I believe it's, uh, is it? No, actually, I'm sorry, not Kayvon Thibodeau. It's, um, he, although he's projected, I think, to go fourth. Uh, it's, oh, damn. It's, it's the guy from Georgia. I forget, I forget, I forget his name. Uh, I forget his name. But he is. He's a freak, though. Guy's an absolute freak. He is a freak, and people are saying that he might go now instead of Aiden Hutchinson. And if I'm being completely honest, like I'm not super impressed with Aiden Hutchinson. Like I, I don't like. I granted, I, I'm sure he's a beast, but like, yeah. I was very surprised to hear people talking about him being the first overall pick of the draft. Like 
to me, that was like the big indication that either like this is a weak draft class or like something's up. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. Uh, you know, we got the New England Patriots. Uh, they'll be on the clock, I believe, with the what is it? Is it the 18th pick or 22nd pick? No, so we have the 21st pick. 21st in the first pick. That's what it is, 21st. But I believe we have nine picks overall. How many how many picks do we have? I think we have two. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. I seven, think we eight, have nine think, picks. But I think they're mostly on the back end, right? Like I think we have one in the first, one in the second, one in the third, and then maybe like two fourths. In no, fifth. so we have one first, one second, one third, one fourth, yeah, two fifths, two fifths, that's what it two is. Two sixths yeah. and one seventh. Okay, okay, yeah. So I mean, look, we're usually able to shine in the late rounds, like so we'll see if Bill can, That's what they're looking for. Yeah, we'll see if Bill can pull any magic. Um gonna be super curious to see who they pick. I mean, personally, curious to hear what you think. I, I would love to see them get one of these young studly wide receivers that people are uh are, are fawning over there seems to be a bunch of them in the draft that show promise um but if they don't get mac jones some help with a young receiver um i really hope they go out and draft a a, a stud cornerback you know what i i mean everyone wants to talk about key, the cbs and how they want to do there's a couple of things that we really need, right? You're, you're just talking about cornerbacks are going to be really big within this draft class and how pr- prevalent they are. Right. Uh, at the honestly, I think from what we need specifically, because what I what you know what not I think what we need what I feel like we're definitely going to pick up. We're going to get a cornerback. We got to replace J.C. Jackson, right? J.C. was a huge asset that we have that we've left. He went to the Raiders, right? Or to the Chargers? Chargers. Chargers. There it is. J.C. Jackson. That's someone we need to replace. From a guard standpoint, we lost our offensive lineman captain, Marcus Cannon. That interior lineman is going to be so crucial against some of these better teams. And so what happens? We're going to need to pick up a freaking freak of a guard, right? You know, remember the year before it was Shaq Mason. Now, what was it? No. The year before it was Marcus Cannon. Now it's Shaq Mason that we left. Shaq Mason went to the Bucs, right? Shaq Mason did go to the Bucs. Yeah, he went to the Bucs as one of our biggest guards that we so we need to pick up something from a lot of standpoint. Michael Judon is an absolute stud, and that's what we have from off the line standpoint. But we need to get someone else to help him out. He can't be our only pass rusher, or else he's going to get bull, bullied the entire time next year. We got to get someone else on the offensive line. And Kyle Van Noy and Donta Hightower being gone, that is a detriment to what we have going on from I don't event. hate – I'm still willing to give Kyle Van Noy another shot. I don't hate Kyle Van Noy at all. I think – Hightower needs to kind of take a back seat. I mean, I think is about it. Donta, I feel like he's just such a smart player. And honestly, if you ever listen to the team, the guys talk about him, he's just so knowledgeable where it's just like, whether he gets there first or, get, or doesn't get there, he knows exactly what's going on at all times because he's a brilliant player. So, you know, trying to bring in a big guy, a big guy, a knowledgeable guy to come and be an asset to the team is going to be crucial. You know, but I don't know. I mean, whatever Bill does, he end up picking off as a lineman somewhere. They end up picking some kind of defensive player. You know, they end up picking mostly defensive players in anything at the end of the day. But our defense is good. But if we can stack it up a little bit more, it'll be great. And, you know, whether we draft a receiver, because what happens, right? We're always known from being a Patriot standpoint to have a lack of receivers or who should be our guys. But if you look at the open market right now, there's so many good assets too. So it's like, all right, maybe you trade a draft, couple draft picks for freaking Debo Samuels. Like, come on now. You know he doesn't want to be there. Well, he saw rumors about him potentially wanting to go to the Patriots first round. We just picked up uh, Devontae Parker from Miami. Having Devontae and Debo Samuels and with our running game with still Damian Harris, Damian Harris and who was the other guy? Ramondre Stevenson. Stevenson. I feel like our and James White back another this year. Level. We get James White back in the backfield for another year. You so. got James White. You can toss him a ball in the flats. You know what I'm saying? He's a good catcher. You know, good catcher running back too. So it's just like I feel like there's not a lot of assets we need. I feel like as long as you get the right assets, 
we are literally it's gonna we're gonna transcend what we did last year. So I'm super excited. I mean, I want to know your thoughts. Obviously, I just went on a rant, but like I don't know. I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about this draft class. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, even though I I just said like I think he should take a wide receiver or a cornerback, I feel like what he's probably gonna do is take a lineman. I feel like that's where the first round pick is gonna go. Um I just don't see in Bill being like the big blockbuster trade kind of guy that goes out and sends away a ton of picks and assets for someone like Debo Samuel. Um, especially where Debo kept saying that he wants to be used as a pure wide receiver. And you know if Bill was gonna get Debo, he'd you know, Bill tries to run those type of those trick t- trickery type of plays. Like he loves receivers that can kind of, you know, do both stuff, you know, pass, run, do all that stuff. So he'd probably want Debo doing that. It doesn't, it just doesn't seem to me like it's going to be a good fit, even though I would love for him to be here. Um, I, I just don't see Bill sending away all those assets for someone like that. Uh, I don't know. So look, it's, it's going to be super interesting. Uh, Debo is obviously, I think one of the best wide receivers in the game. He, obviously wants out of san francisco so so we'll see but yeah i i I do think we need more help for mac jones i do think we need to beef that uh you know the the edge of our secondary up a little bit with that with those cornerbacks because we are really deep at safety believe it or not like we're super deep in the safety position who's gonna who's gonna step up do you know who for safeties yeah well i mean for safeties we just got we just got jabril peppers we got we got we got devin mccordy we got Adrian Phillips. We got uh, Kyle Duggar, um, and we got we got uh, one other person whose name is eluding me. I mean, I want your honest opinion about your Bill Peppers, right? I love it. He is a he was a great player out of college. Another Michigan boy. Shout out SK. But since he was drafted in his first couple of years, he was all right. But then he got hurt, and it seems like he's a step or two back. We picked up Malcolm Butler, didn't we? Did we pick up Malcolm yeah, Butler too? Yeah, we brought we brought Malcolm back. Yeah, but he's slow as shit. I don't know. I, I don't know if you've watched him playing, but unless he just buys in the Patriots system where he gets to the right spot at the right time, he looks pretty slow. So I don't know. I you know, do we get a young guy who's going to get there, or do we just lock in on our old faithfuls that we you know we feel like we can believe it? Like you know. <sighs> I I don't know. I, th- I think it's going to be a very interesting year for the Patriots, just because I see all the teams in the AFC getting better, including all three teams in their division. And I can't necessarily say we've gotten better over the off season. Um, you know what I mean? So I we're gonna have to see. Uh, we're gonna have to see what happens. Um, you know, maybe they, they really hit in the draft. Maybe they still bring in a couple of, uh, you know, acquisitions over the course of the rest of the offseason. But, yeah, I, I'm not impressed with what I've seen for the Patriots so far. I'm not. But uh, I, I think they could be in trouble this coming year if uh, they don't make a few more moves. I think they could be one of those teams that finishes around, you know, 8-9, and 9-8 nine, nine and eight and falls a little short of the playoffs. It's going to be tough. going to be very tough. Um. Anything else? Do we miss anything? No, man. I uh, not a lot going on, but you know, I've been uh, working on the wine page a little bit. Oh, right? all right, all right. Working on the wine page a little bit. Yeah, I, I've been kind of you know here and there for the last few weeks, and uh, but it's like you know what? I need to make a return. Maybe change the content a little bit. I mean, obviously, I like my wine tasting, but being some buddies. I visited a couple wine bars, and so might be getting some wine bar video comes in, Ooh. coming in, and showing those off. So, not not sports related, but for the for the football guys that you know that aren't afraid to enjoy a little wine, or the sports guys that aren't afraid afraid to enjoy a joint, drink a little wine. We're not talking to you, LeBron. We're talking about everyone else. Phil, you know, worldwide wines, man. We we're gonna have some content coming out soon, and uh, you know, you'll you'll definitely enjoy watching. Oh, yeah, for sure. Give them a follow. Give them a check out. You know these dudes know what they're talking about. They're always entertaining. And uh, it's, you know, it's funny. I remember, I remember, like, I I like wine. And I remember 
in college, I didn't. In the sen- my senior year of college, I like started forcing myself to drink wine and like acquired a taste for it because I would say to myself, huh, I just feel like as an adult, you're supposed to like wine. And now, <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I love wine now. But yeah, no, you do a great job with the page. You really do. I mean, it's not even about like having to like wine. It's just, you know, when you're working and you're going to an event or you're going on a holiday to see the family, seeing the in-laws or, you know what I'm saying? You're just doing a nice little dinner. You're not going to bring a core. You're not going to bring a case of Bud Heavies. You know what I'm saying? You're not bringing a freaking case of Heineken when you're going and you're bringing a nice bottle of wine to pair the dinner because, you know, you want to look some white, even though wine is not only meant for the you know, for the high class, it's meant for everybody. But because you want to look nice, everyone always brings a bottle of wine. So why not learn a little bit about it, be able to talk about it, even if it's something brief or saying a couple words, or just, you know, just being ultimately knowledgeable and not just being that standard guy that just brings any bottle. Because who knows? You can find that $19 bottle that ends up being like, tastes like it's a $100 bottle, instead of just picking that $100 bottle that tastes like it's $12. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah, no, one, one, 100%. Um, and if you're out there listening and you like wine, like Gordon said, I suggest you check it out. Um, it's always good content, always reliable. Uh, and I like to think we're good content. We're reliable too, right? Dude, we're the best contact and we're the most reliable. You know why? Because we're good Boston guys. That's what it is. Just good guys. You can't beat that. No. We, we, we're not biased. We're not biased like these New Yorkers. No, 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 no. <laughs> of course not. We would never, never be biased like the New Yorkers. Never um, biased. Go also, yo, real quick before we sign off. Shout out to the World Cup, which I did not know was this summer, and I'm pretty sure Cameroon's in it, right? Dude, we snuck in it. Yeah. It was like two minutes left, and we ended up winning that final goal, making that final goal, and Cameroon ended up sneaking in. We haven't not been in in a long – we haven't not been in – we haven't not not been in such a long time that I almost thought we weren't going to make it, and we snuck in. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Love that. Let's go. We love that. So yeah, shout out. Uh, I'll be looking forward to that. I love the World Cup and it kind of snuck up on me. I really had no clue when it was this summer. So yeah, we'll be looking forward to that. Um, we definitely got to get my, my my dad. Definitely is going to want to oh, come back and talk a little World Cup. You oh, know, 100%. you know he gets excited. No, it, you know he, he gets so excited over that dur- stuff. Dur- uh, over the course of the World Cup, he should just be like a weekly correspondent. Like he should call into every episode to just do do a World <laughs> Cup segment. Honestly. We're gonna have to get it on. We're gonna have to do Saturday mornings and sneak him in here we'll and just plan, get him in. We'll plan it around his schedule. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's worth it. <laughs> Love uh, it. Um, all right, episode I believe twenty eight. Is that what I said earlier? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yeah, it's twenty eight. If it's not, whatever. But episode twenty eight, the trenches coming at you. Jay Fine and Don Gordon, uh, from the Hedge Better Studios in Braintree, Massachusetts. We appreciate you guys out there. You know, if you want to watch us, check us out on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. You know, peep the Instagram, peep the social media. Um, Hedgebed is on TikTok too. Uh, we got to get back up, post some more videos and that. Uh, Worldwide Wines, obviously on TikTok. So you can find them there also as well. When you're checking out Hedgebed, check out Worldwide Wines. Um, other than that, we will catch you guys. Appreciate you. We'll see you. Easy. <laughs> <laughs>